Hello, Simon here from the Tudor Group and we're on the way up to see the next stage of our trailer. So welcome to our playlist that is bringing you the tiny Tudor houses which is very much our new project and then being able to follow us build that show house and give you a good representation of what this new project is all about. So if you were following me last time round on the, um, on the video series you would have known that I've been able to see this trailer for the very first time. We've employed a proper professional trailer company to do the job and all of the engineering designs have come in from New Zealand. A lot of the research I did before starting this project was really showing me that the kings of the tiny houses were coming in from Australia and New Zealand. So I managed to acquire the engineering plans from New Zealand and actually a company that's been building these for more than 20 years so I'm pretty confident that I'm in good hands. So we're on to the next stage of the trailer build. So that trailer now has had some very small alterations done, some things that we thought would benefit us a little bit better because we are trying to take a, a New Zealand idea and introduce that into Thailand so a little tweaks needed to be done. But that trailer is now ready for what they call the hot galvanizing, which is the chemical treatment that will stop the steel trailer from ever being able to rust. Clever stuff, I can tell you. So, I'm in the car, I'm on the motorway. Let's go and have a look. I don't know what it is about driving to Bangkok, but I just never seem to get past this service station. I don't know if it's for my love of coffee, or what? Oh, just look at those buns. Huh. Clearly I'm not the only one. Well, despite my coffee stop, I've still managed to get here early. <laughs> So I've got to hold on and wait for the guys to bring the trailer around. So perhaps it's time for me to give you a tour of Harry's shop. Believe me, if you're in the business and looking for a trailer, I'm pretty sure Harry's got it. she comes. This is the guys bringing it forward so the second time we get to see the trailer and the last time we get to see it in its traditional steel black. Obviously after this it will go to its galvanizing process and uh, it will come back all super bright and shiny and rust proof for the rest of its life. Okay, let me explain some little bits to you. The difference is from the first time we saw the actual trailer and the little tweaks and changes that we've made. Because you're not actually looking at one trailer. It's not just a trailer on its own. What you're actually looking at here is the bottom of the house with a trailer underneath. So the changes and the additions that we've actually made is we have to physically be able to lock the trailer underneath to the actual base and the bottom of the house. So we have added four locks. One, two, three, four. 
So these are almost like container, shipping container locks. And the idea is that you are able to lock the trailer to the base of the house so that house can never slip and slide all over the place. The second change, addition that we've made, is we needed to actually lower the base of the house and the trailer. Now the reason is, under the Thai laws, we can't go more than four metres in height. And that four metres is not measured from the base of the house, it's actually measured from the road. So it was very important that we didn't lose too much spacing here with the wheel section. So everything has been reduced in its height now and we're actually using smaller wheels. So we also have guides now, and we'll demonstrate that in a minute. This is how we will actually guide the trailer underneath the house so it becomes a more automatic and more easy process. And then basically, well, the weldings are now completely full. The first time we saw the trailer, it was just tacked together so that it was very easy to make any changes we had to do. But now everything is completely fully welded together so it can go off to the galvanizing process. So let's demonstrate what we're actually talking about and physically raise the base of the house and actually take the trailer out. And then you get to see what is the secret behind the scenes. So step number one in this process is actually to release the locks. As I was talking about, down inside here, we have four locks in the position. These are the locks that are actually holding together the trailer together with the base. So we release those locks, and they're actually very, very simple. They're just basically bolts, and those bolts go up through the bottom of the trailer and then wind themselves into the base. The next step, of course, is to actually wind up the base of the house from the trailer. Once those stands have been wound up, you can now actually pull the trailer clean away from the base of the house. As you can see, that trailer is now coming out. So now you can see much more clearly that we actually have two parts to this complete, well, this complete section. Now the trailer, because it becomes separate, it's only the trailer you have to take in on a yearly basis to have the MOT registration, etc. off down at the Thai test centre. This is now the base of the actual house. Unfortunately, the galvanizing plant wouldn't actually let us in to film that hot dip processing, which is a real shame because it's really part of the history of what we're doing. But I did manage to find a very good clip from a company that does it professionally, and I think this will explain exactly what the metal goes through in that processing to get that anti-corrosive coating. Take a look at this. First part of that is the caustic tank. So a ladder, a Rosenbauer ladder, or any other type of steel we do, goes into the caustic tank. It is a hot alkali solution that removes its greases, oils, and other items like that, but it will not remove shellac, it will not remove paint. After that process is done, it goes in there for about three to five minutes. It is then removed and taken over to the caustic rinse tank. This is an in and out tank, done really fast, but also during this tank process, they are looking for venting and draining within the product so we can stop before it proceeds any further. After that, it is taken over to the acid tank. There are two types of acid in the galvanizing industry. One is hydrochloric acid, which is cold. One is sulfuric acid, which is heated. We use sulfuric acid here at the Valley site. This tank is heated between 140 and 160 degrees. What sulfuric acid or any acid is gonna do in the galvanizing industry, it's gonna take the iron oxides off of the product. What it does in that, and best in essence of analogy, it's gonna take all those iron oxides off, it's gonna take that metal and change the chemistry of it. It's gonna bring it up in little spikes, which you're gonna see, which sets it up for the intermetallic bonding process. Then it's taken over to our acid rinse tanks. Once it goes through our acid rinse tanks, 
It's taken in each one of those in an in and out process. Once again, looking for venting and draining by a different crane operator that operated it through the caustic tanks. Here at the Valley site in 2008, we started with reverse osmosis water. The reason we did that, the cleaner that we can make the water, the better the galvanizing is gonna to adhere to the product. It then proceeds to the flux tank. The flux tank is heated to 180 degrees, between 160 to 180. What the flux is going to do, it's gonna take the rest of the remaining iron oxides off the product, and it's gonna leave another finish on there so those iron oxides do not form. It is ammonium chloride based solution. And the best analogy I can put to somebody out there would be if you're trying to solder some copper pipes together and you don't put the flux on it before you solder it, it doesn't suck in and, suck in and seal that joint. Same thing is gonna happen if I don't flux that material before I galvanize it. It's not gonna make that intermetallic bond make contact. From this process, it will proceed to our kettle. Our kettle is heated to 830 degrees molten zinc. This is where the galvanizing process starts. Once the ladder or any material is dipped into the galvanizing bath, it starts this process. Part of that process is best described in four layers. Once again, this is not a one coating item. It coats the product inside and outside. Once it's done past that, it heads to our hot finishing area. Once it enters our hot finishing area, our material handlers clean these ladders up, get all the icicles and items off there, cleans up the runs, making it sure so that the firemen don't get this ladder, they don't hurt their hands going up. There's an inspection process that we go through here, and we make sure we meet everything within the ASM 123 standards. You know, I'd really like to do these videos where we can come to you and say, we're amazing, everything we do is amazing, look what we've got. But the reality is it doesn't always go to plan. We're just about to get the delivery of the trailer for that showroom and the factory at the last minute has just let us down. We're not going to be able to use the factory that's been planned for a very long time. So my next door neighbour has very kindly jumped in with a piece of land that she's got very close to us and has said, well, if you can clear the land, you're very welcome to use that to set up for your uh, tiny house and your showroom. So that is now mission impossible right at the last minute. So we've got to send in the JCBs. Here's a take a, well, take a look at this. Unbelievable. Well, there's our piece of neighbour's land. We're gonna bring in the JCB that has literally just arrived, just pulled up there, and we're gonna clear it to make a makeshift, well, what can I say, a makeshift factory, I suppose. But clearance time, because we just gotta get on with this job. isn't it? So now we have to dig ourselves some footings. straight line. It's not looking too bad. Okay, she's here. Our delivery came in last night. Harry very kindly drove it down from Bangkok and apparently he gave it a damn good testing as well. 
it doesn't bounce, it doesn't glide, the braking system is working and all of the lights are working so that's really good news. However obviously things are going to change once you've physically got the house on the top of it. So let me give you a little bit more detail about the trailer. Now we start off with the actual towing hook and hitching system here. So basically it starts off, this is a twist system. So it basically means it can twist freely from the car. So although the hook is actually in here, it allows the flexibility of the trailer, but it does also have the breakaway system in it. So if you're in the worst scenario of all and you lose the actual caravan, the actual tiny house, the tiny house can roll, but it doesn't take your car with it. You imagine the situation if that went and the car went with it, nasty. So it has a breakaway system in it. Now Harry explained all the brakes to me last night because I was quite interested in this. You have like a concertina section here and automatically when your car is braking the trailer will be moving towards the car. That concertinas this section here which pulls the braking cables. So if we walk down a little bit further you can actually see the braking cable is running all the way down the centre and then separates off onto the four wheels. So automatically, from a very, very simple section there, when you brake the car, the trailer also brakes. Extra to that then, we've got all the electrical system, which supplies the lights. So that is actually attached through a connector, but lines up with your standard braking when you put the brake on the pedal. So basically, when you brake in the car, all the lights come on and the indicators. So we've got them on the trailer. So if you're driving the trailer only, that's obviously got a set of lights. And right at the very back, we put on then an extra plate on the back of the house where you'll have all your registration and your lights on the back of the tiny house as well. So it gives you a complete set. So there we go. So this really is the part where Harry's job has ended and mine is just beginning. And as you've just seen, I've got the surprise, not only am I building a tiny house now, I'm also building the factory where we will be building the tiny houses. So I'll see you then. I'll see you next time. Bye bye for now. If you'd like to watch more videos like this on what Patia and Thailand have to offer, then click on the link up here. If you'd like to see what property promotions we currently have, then click on the link down here. If you generally just like to follow the channel, uh, then please like and subscribe. It's not going to cost you a penny, you just have to click the button. And if you ring that notification bell, you'll never miss any up and coming videos.